Ned from Sprogly Motorsport. Yeah. And this is our 21 Mark 8 Golf GTI Club Sport. Now before we get the video going, I just want to say my own Mark 8 Golf GTI Club Sport is currently for sale at APS Specialist Vehicles in Brackley and they can sort out finance and partex. If you're interested, I'll put a link in the description of the video below. Hello guys and welcome back to the Volks Wizard channel. Today's video is episode four of a Project Cooper. In the last video, I took the car to racing line to go on their dyno to see how much power it was producing and whether it would stop, and it was. It was about, I think, 300 horsepower dead and it was a stock car which surprised me because it performed so well in the video before at Evo track evening at Bedford Autodrome. Well while I was at Racing Line I spoke to them about the car's weakest dynamic point and that's the brakes because it's not a sub 8 model it just has a standard 340 mil brakes and they said well why don't you buy our X demo um, stage 2 Evo brake kit. These aren't much bigger they're just 345s up from 340 but they're actually handed correctly so the vents work on both sides, on a lot of setups, TTRS, um, Sub 8, Club Sport S even, the vents and the discs are only right on the one side of the car because they're the same part number for both sides. That's corrected with this uh, racing line set. They're a bit bigger and they're monoblock calipers, so they should work better and they'll also be usefully lighter. I left it a bit late to fit it. I started fitting it on Wednesday, today's Friday, and came across a bit of a problem. It was going really, really well. As you can see, they're on there. And the last thing to do is bleed the brakes so they say start at this corner and then I got onto this one which is an original rear caliper and found that the nipple was rounding off when I was trying to do it. I was using the proper brake caliper um, brake spanner that goes all the way around the head of the nipple and even so it rounded off. I thought that's no big deal because I've got spares. I took it all the way out, tried to get the new one in, it wouldn't go in because the thread had been damaged so I was left with a caliper that was just useless, the fluid was coming out of it and I tried Euro car parts, they seemed to have the right part in stock. When I got to their branch in Warwick, it was the wrong part. It was for a much less powerful car. They didn't even know there was a Cooper with 310 mil rear brakes. So I looked at secondhand stuff, there wasn't an awful lot around. A lot of the cars of this era are electric parking brake. This isn't, this is a normal manual handbrake, which does make it harder to find the used stuff. So I eventually ordered it from TPS at a very high price, like £250, and I had to have a couple of bolts as well, so it was uh, complied with their warranty. Um, so that part is now here. I had to go to TPS in Coventry. This is another complication because I'm no longer in Birmingham. I had to change branches and that delayed things a bit. Hence why I've just come back from Coventry with the part, which is hopefully right, and some brake fluid there as well, just in case, because I did have racing line race brake fluid but a lot of that has gone on the floor because of the problems I've been having so let's get this sorted out and get on the way to Bedford Autodrome. Give you a closer look at the Racing Line Stage 2 Evo brake kit. So we've got three, four, five mil discs handed correctly for whichever side of the car they're on, unlike the factory setups, TTRS, Sub 8, Club Sport S, they're all wrong on I think the right hand side. That does get very hot. We've got monoblock calipers, four piston, some cheaper calipers like joined here. I've had problems with leaks on those, so this is just one piece of aluminium and the Ferrari F40 pads, which are um, not particularly exotic. They're just quite a common fitment. These are racing lines own, but they're available in lots of brands and stuff. It's not a hard pad to get. And we're bleeding with this pressure bleeder, which I've had for years. It's made by Sealy and uh, it's very, very good. Okay guys, well, the car is now fixed and my test drive is the drive to Bedford Autodrome. That's not ideal by any means, but I just don't have the time to do it any other way. I have stamped on the brake pedal stationary on the driveway and it was rock solid and generally brakes are pretty reliable if you've got a good pedal it should stay that way even if you're going to drive on track obviously i'm going to be quite careful and obviously i need to bed the pads in racing line suggests you do 10 stops or slowdowns from 60 miles an hour to 10 miles an hour and then keep driving to cool the brakes down and that should be it so i should be able to do that shortly on a quite a bit of road you obviously need to find somewhere where it's safe to do that 
But yeah, I'm just now realizing I'm gonna make it because all I've had to think about for the last 48 hours is trying to fix that caliper. So thanks to the guys at Coventry TPS for sorting me out today. And uh, yeah, the reason why I really wanted to make it today more than usual is that my friend Simon Harper is going to be there. Um, I met him at Bedford Autorome about a year ago when we did a Club Sport Mark 8, my car, versus his highly tuned Mark 7 Golf R. Well, today he's bringing his highly tuned Mark 7 Golf GTI Club Sport S, which is even cooler than his R. So it should be nice to go and do some laps um, following him or watching him go into the distance. Also, a subscriber to the channel, Ed, is bringing his Mark 8 Club Sports and apparently a gazebo as well because it's a very warm day. It's 29 and a half degrees now, half three in the afternoon. But unlike last year with my Mark 8, I have got the R600 fitted as well. So two changes over the last track evening. I've got the better brakes and I've got the R600, which should give us denser air mass into the engine, which should then mean it doesn't have to hold back the performance because of intake air temperatures and the risk of detonation and all that. We'll see how that materializes later, but I'm just really hoping that in the next sort of two hours, it just cools down a bit to about 25 or 20. We shall see what's happening. But anyway, let's get to Bedford and go and have some fun. So just arrived, quick tour of the car park as usual. So a great selection of cars, Mazda MX-5, the ST, David Duke's um, tuned Alpine 911, the GR Yaris, the K3, the M3, tuned Mark 8 Club Sport, which we'll talk about a lot later. The M2, 74, Taycan Turbo. GT4, GT4, GR, Lotus, A4, A35, GTR, Alpine, another Alpine, GT4. It's good to see the Alpines here today. And uh, yeah, quite a loud Lambo, which might have a bit of trouble with the uh, noise sensors today. Okay guys, as I mentioned in the walk around of the pits, there's a Mark 8 Golf GTI Club Sport here that's tuned, and this is the guy that owns it, Ed. How are we getting on? All right. I'm Ed from Sproggly Motorsport. Yeah. And this is our 21 Mark 8 Golf GTI Club Sport, as you just said. It's rare enough to see a Club Sport, but a tuned one, um, I don't think I've seen one before, so I've seen probably tuned GTI 245s for some reason. Yeah. But Club <laughs> Sports, especially on the road though, yeah, yeah. I've seen three, I think. So it's yeah. amazing to see one here today, keeping up the GTI sort of name on the track, because it's quite rare to see a GTI here at all, really. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, absolutely, of course. So tell us a bit about your car. Okay. So well, actually, no, tell us a bit about Sprogly Motorsport. Sprogly. Okay, so Sprogly is essentially myself. There is a couple of others that help out. Uh, I started out in two th the end of 2018, um, and I wanted to get into 3D printing and designing car parts. So, uh, I basically taught myself how to do it all and the first thing I made was a set of uh, brake ducts for an Astra VXR oh, cool. and it sort of built from there and now I do loads of bits for Astra VXRs and stuff like that. So yeah. have you got 3D printed parts on here? Uh, not yet, so the, the purpose of this was to try and get into a different market so like yeah. I said, predominantly the stuff we've done is Astra VXR stuff and pretty much saturated the market for those sort of things. Yeah. Like every, everything I can pretty much thought, thought of, I've, I've done now. Um, then we moved on to enclosed air boxes uh, for little naturally aspirated stuff like Lupos, 106 GTIs, and I've had pretty good success there. Um, but I wanted to you know, keep the ball rolling kind of thing. And I previously had a Mark 7.5 Golf GTD as a sort of daily driver. Good car. Uh, that went back so I could put sort of more financial commitment into Sprogley and um, I really missed having a golf. Mm. So the time came where it was sort of, I was ready for the next investment into Sprogley and I thought why not combine the two, get a golf and get something that we can use to develop parts and test new parts on and stuff like that. Perfect. So scraped, scraped the barrel and managed to get the uh, club sport. So show us around your car then, because okay, uh, it's start pretty cool. So uh, there is a couple of little visual bits of the car. I mean, they do, obviously the console comes with different bumpers and the score and stuff like that, but there was I'm a little bit OCD with these sort of things. And there was a few things that kind of annoyed me about certain aspects of the car. There are lots of things that annoy a lot of people about the market <laughs> goal. So uh, this might sound like first world problems, but the first one was 
I, I like the front of a car to have a nice flat bottom. So, and obviously where it comes up quite substantially in the middle. Yeah. Uh, I suppose it was the... I see what you mean, right, yeah, yeah. That. Um, I'm not a massive fan of the splitter, but it's sort of the best of what's available. Do you know what I mean? Cool. And if we move on to the engine, Okay. No, obviously, still no tuning available, and it hasn't got a power module or anything like that. Yeah. But we do have the forged turbo in there. Yeah. So just just picking up point of what Ed said, then there's no um, nobody's cracked the ECUs yet on these, so it's no. tuning box or nothing. Though the the racing line PCM box seems to be yeah. doing pretty well. So I mean, I mean, we we sell racing line stuff, and from what I've read, not from actual companies, but from uh, end user yeah. reviews, it seems like the racing one. Uh, excuse me, the racing line one is sort of head and shoulders yeah. above the others. I drove their S3 with a PCM box and uh, I couldn't really fault it and I'm, I can fault a lot of remaps, so yeah. Exactly. Anyway, but you haven't got that, you've got standard 300 no, PS. And, and to be fair, even, even if tuning was available, I'm kind of keen to leave it, in, certainly engine and gearbox tune wise, as standard as I can. So we've got more reliability out yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. You know I mean? It's 320 probably on the dyno anyway, that's enough it, for most exactly. people. Exactly, you know, keeps it all reliable. But we do have the you know, we like a bit of noise, so we've got Forge uh, turbo inlet pipe and Ooh. what a lot of people might recognise is the Mark 7 ram air kit that we've tweaked slightly to fit the Mark 8. Just like Racing Line have with their right. intake, they've exactly. had to tweak it for the Mark 8. So. Yeah, I mean, this, as far as noise goes, this is about as good as you're going to get. And What about hot weather, um, you know, intake air temperatures, because it's not enclosed? No, I mean, you do have a heat shield, which is going to do something, but it's not really as ideal as is that the, yeah, isn't it? So it's, it is actually touching. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's marked it. Okay, time, yeah, it's good because it means it's making contact. So. Yeah, it, yeah, exa exactly. That's, I mean, if you had an inch gap above it, then it's not That's crap, strong. yeah. Um, so yeah, and this, we, we know from the Mark 7 platform will flow as all the air you'll ever need to throw at it, do you know what I mean? And it makes a wicked sound. So that's, oh, of course, racing line gas bonnet struts, right? <laughs> yeah. So we've got a set of, uh, the new Team Dynamix Pro Rex LT wheels, uh, they're not crazy wide, there is still an 8J wheel, but we've got uh, a 235 Nankang AL one on. Uh, the other set of wheels on the car is a set of Pro Track ones. We have a set of Goodyear uh, Eagle F1 Super Sports, which to be fair, I have done a track day with and they were really, really good, absolutely amazing tyre. But as the car becomes more track orientated, we are moving over to a dedicated track tyre, and I've had really good success with these with mm. the other track car. How much are these for a set? The what the wheels? Nankangs. Uh oh the uh well the the wheel and tire package together from Demon's Weeks was around sixteen, seventeen hundred pounds. Mm -hmm. I think I got a little bit of a trade discount but okay. it's, it's it's in that ballpark. Yeah. And the ironically the Pro Tracks and the Goodyear tire and wheel combo is almost exactly the same price. That's a road officially a it's a 50-50 road and track tire, the Super Sport, isn't it? Yeah, so wheel and tire setup wise, they're priced, is they're about the same. Mm. Uh, moving on to the brakes, we've got EBC's still uh, technically development kit, although it will be available very soon. Um, four pot big brake kit with the two piece uh, disc. Mm. Uh, we've got the braided lines, we've got the race fluid, uh, the EBC fluid, and we've got a set of EBC RPX pads, mm -hmm. which uh, I would say this is my first ever time using this particular pad and I would say they're at least as good as an RS29 having used an RS29. Um, you know, I know some people have mixed reviews on EBC yeah. brakes, but these are absolutely unreal, genuinely. Um, How big are the discs? They look uh, uh, They are 355 mil, right. so they're actually a slightly smaller size than the standard club sport disc. Yeah. But the whole setup is quite a lot lighter, I think. Swapping from the standard complete front set to the this uh, complete front set, it saves it's 17 or 18 kilograms. I have it uh, the exact number written down, but it's a, a decent weight saving considering that, it's unsprung weight. That's just the brakes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Just swapping from the complete standard club sport set to the complete EVC set. That's crazy. Yeah. 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 So to be fair, overall with all the little bits and bobs here and there, the car is 47, 48 kilograms lighter than a standard one. That's significant. Which is, is, you know, it's, it's certainly not bad. Um, we've also got the Racing Line Sudden Nut Kit, yeah. uh, which I, I like to put a Sudden Nut Kit on every car, and we sell Racing Line products, so it made sense to put the Racing Line Kit on. You get the nice anodized um, lugs, I think you call them, mm -hmm. so um, that's really nice. Uh, we've also got 
I know it's a little detail, but aluminium spigot rings. Oh yeah. I did start off with plastic ones and I melted them at the last track day, so it is <laughs> worth putting an aluminium spigot ring on if you are doing track days. Cool. Uh, and finish this up off, we've got a set of TTRS brake ducts as well. Oh nice. Well this this doesn't look standard, so what you no. got? So oh. we've got a set of Bilstein B14 coilovers on the car. Um, it's a okay. coilover setup that I've used on quite a few previous cars yeah. and I just get on with them really well. They're by no means the best coilover setup in the world, but bang for buck, they're about as good as about as good as you can get. They're, they're very inexpensive for how well they perform. Um, I could, could have obviously just put lower end springs in the car, like a set of V-backs or racing lines, but I was quite keen to have some height adjustment and where the car is a, a non-DCC car with the passive dampers, um, upgrading the damper at the same time made sense. So uh, that's that's what we've got there. I also have a set of brand new 034 Camber. Um, what, do they, what do they call? They call them Camster. Camber and Caster adjustable uh, top mounts, which have, have yet to be put on. I didn't manage to get it done quite in time for today. So standard Geo, just a bit lower. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, it, the car does actually have a, a full corner weight and a line set done by Spires Tuning in Limington Spa. All right, near me. Um, that's good which, to know. Again, I've done on every car I've had for the last five or six years because it's made more of a difference just having that done than any other single thing I've ever done to any car. Really? Okay. Yeah, honestly, the, the difference is just, if you if you want to spend the money on getting decent call I would spend the extra money and get a decent alignment at the same okay. time because yeah. it makes the world a difference. If I do that to my car, which is over there, I'll make sure I go to them in Leamington because I'm just down, the, down really, the road from them. Really, really awesome bloke. Uh, I haven't seen these in carbon yet. Yeah, these are a set of carbon wing row covers. They are real carbon, but they're just carbon skinned uh, wing they... row covers that we, we supply. Okay. That's one, one of our little products that we already have for car. Because they were optional on the TCR, genuine. Yes. Obviously different mirror shape, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, um, the spoiler's different, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, so with similar story to the front splitter at the front. Front Hang on, you got vents. You got vents as well. Yes, that, that's I'm, fake. I'm, I, I, I'm on the I'm on the fence about those. That was a, that was a bit of a, the, a bit of a ricer mod, and <laughs> it might end up coming off again. To be honest. Yeah, so the, the the spoiler lift again is a Maxton product. Now the obviously the Club Sport and the R performance pack, I believe, come both come with a decent size large wing. Mm. The thing that annoys me about this, and I only really noticed it when I was following this in another car is the wing actually sits really low compared to the roof. Oh, line. that's interesting, yeah. So when you're following the car, yeah. the, it, it just looked weirdly low. So that's I wanted true. to try and lift the visual line of the wing up. Mm -hmm. So that did a job. Again, it's, I would prefer to not have to put stick on bits on a golf because that's not me at all. But there was just little aspects of how it looked that, you know, uh, I thought was worthwhile doing. I think it's allowed if it's restrained and as part of an overall package, which yeah, clearly it is. So absolutely. let's just stand back and get a good look at the car. Yeah, sure. So yeah, looks um, pretty purposeful. Yeah, visually it's, it's more or less there to be fair. We've got obviously the black badges on as well, just to stealth the whole car out. Yeah, I like that. Um, Standard tints on the back there. Yeah, yeah. They're not particularly dark, are they? Yeah. Okay, anything? It, Go on, sorry. If it, I was going to say, while we're at the back, obviously, standard club sport exhaust, but we do have an RPM performance resonator to me, which is, uh, it's got the little anti drone pipe on as well, which for me is the perfect amount of noise for a golf, because I know not many people might like this opinion, but I don't think golfs are the best sounding car in the world. Mm. So, this doesn't really make it much louder, but it sort of enhances the pops and bangs that you get, right. and it gives it a little bit more tone without yeah. making it louder. There is a modification that we've done quite recently, uh, last weekend, which was another thing that was high up the to-do list on this car, and that's a uh, Club Sport S-style wow. rear seat delete kit from Stone Performance. So you've got the full carpet, uh, bar and net, which again saves, I think it saves 22 kilograms in the back, which is nothing to sniff over. The best view is yeah, from here. Yeah, absolutely, it does, it does look good. I mean, the, the bar's not doing anything functional, but you've got some weight saving there, so it's, yeah. it's still worthwhile doing. Is that specific for Mark 8 or is it a Mark 7 part? No, no, this is a, this is a uh, Mark 8 specific. Oh, really? Cool. Yeah. Okay, because a lot of things cross over, but yeah. yeah. Excellent. The, the company that actually made this have their own Mark 8, so that's yeah. how I know it's... What are they called again? They're called Stern Performance, in, based in Germany. Okay. There's Simon Harper and his Club Sport S as well, so they're all here tonight. Now, apart from looking at this Club Sport, we're going to go on track together and... Um, have a little friendly sort of yeah. co competition that allowed, sorry, a friendly um, 
drive, leisure drive on the track. <laughs> and Simon's going to join in as well, so it'll be interesting. Simon's tuned Club Sport S, and hopefully this should, against all odds, be an interesting track video. OK, guys, it's been very difficult to get the right tyre temperatures today because it's still uh, 29 and a half degrees at 20 to 7. But I'm going to go out now with Ed and we'll see what his uh, tune club sport can do. So I'm in, hopefully in Cooper mode. And uh, yeah, you can see the speedo in the middle of the screen, which is quite cool in the last video, I think. And uh, let's just warm up, although warming up today is not necessarily going to take very long. I think I'll take a lot longer to warm up at these kind of temperatures, but I've got my aircon on 17. I'm so glad. I don't have an ultimate sub-8, I'd have an ultimate sweat on if I did. Into the top of third then, into fourth now, hard on the brakes. I've got to say, it's shifting, but then I'm on DCC, so on Bill Stein's. Yeah, that makes all the difference. <laughs> the tyres are doing all right, though. Now we've dropped a lot of air out of them. And then onto the straight again. Third gear. I was just crap with my apex then. Let's get in for the GR. 137. So we're pretty damn consistent. Fair bit of traffic now anyway. This car just, just fires out of the corners like that. It's unbelievable, even in the heat today. Come on, GR. I thought you were the best. Simon Harper's Mark 7 Golf GTI Club Sport S. He's over there and uh, he's had his car brand new. He brought it here when it was brand new. Let his 18 year old son at the time drive it and uh, they cooked the brakes and the clutch and I think he wrecked the paint as well somehow. So uh, it's it, um, started a load of upgrades that they did and as you can see it's lower. It's got more camber on the front. It's got these AP racing brakes. Inside it's as delicious as it needs to be from standard. Anyway, and yeah, of course I'm a bit envious because Simon, we both got them at the same time in December 2016, but Simon used his properly. I was a bit too precious over mine. Uh, it's got the Eagle Super Sport R's as well, which I'm on. So we match when it comes to tyres, but I think he's outclassing me with the brakes big time. Yeah, it's looking, looking good. I wonder what the mileage is because Simon does does use his cars. 14495, well, top man, even though he wears a pink shirt. Okay guys, well, we're all going out together now. Simon Harper and his Club Sport S. I've got Ed from Sprogley behind me. Let's have some fun. So it's important to build up steadily, especially on a hot day like today. It's still going to be something ridiculous. 29 degrees still at dawn, uh, 7.15. Right, Simon's off. Oh, he's not warming up. Some big brakes, has he got some big gonads though? Ooh. Ooh, we've had a spinner. GT360.
Late, come on, late. Drag race. <laughs> we're both manual, we're both three door. Hey, he gets into his stride, doesn't he? But into fifth. Club for S. Now I could take this in second, but I'm not going to. Because I want to go easy on the car. I don't want to break it today because I probably will break it. This is brilliant. Club Sport S, Cooper 280. Yeah, wow. Did you have fun then? Yeah, it was great fun. Yeah. You were out for ages, we couldn't believe it. We both came in thinking oh, that's it, our tyres have gone off and everything. Yeah, those tyres really stand up to it well, don't they? Uh, those Goodyear's are awesome. What have you done to your tyre pressures? Uh, I dropped them down to about, I dropped them down to about 25. Oh, okay. So, but look, look at the road they Well, if you can do those laps at 29 and a half degrees centigrade, that's, that's totally impressive. Okay guys, it's 10 to eight. I have got a bit of fuel left, 110 miles even at this pace. And I'm going out with Ed from Sprogley Motorsport in his Mark 8 again. Yeah, it's still, it's, it's eight minutes to eight and it's 28 and a half degrees centigrade. You couldn't make it up, but the cars are holding up pretty well. Okay, braking late into third, into second. Change the direction now. It's just insane. It's a fourth. Hundred on the brakes. Come on. Come on. Whoa! Right, let's get this late. Ed's really good at this corner. I'm just useless. Oh, let's do 140, we've got to do 140, into fifth. Okay, it's eight o'clock and uh, a lot of people have gone home, but we're still here. Yeah. And uh, we had an interesting last session. We, well, we got our money's worth to say. <laughs> yeah, we did. The only little downside, Ed is Mr. Cool Down. Respect your machinery, warm up, cool down. Mechanical empathy, not yeah. to not. <laughs> exactly. Well, yeah, you have to be here. Okay. Uh, changing the subjects. We got the um, checkered flag on halfway up the straight. We we're doing yeah. like 140 miles an hour. Yeah. Had to brake and then um, we were told to come into the pits. We thought it was the end of the fast lap and we could do one more cool down lap. 
And today, the hottest day of the year, I reckon, yeah. Ed said to me, if we don't keep moving, we're going to catch fire. And yeah. I, don't, I think you probably meant that, did you? Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, you've gone from, like you said, 140 mile an hour hard break, you know, 20, 30 seconds beforehand, coming to a complete stop yeah. on the hottest day of the year. Yeah. It's not ideal, is it? Yeah, it's 8 o'clock. It's still, I reckon, 26, 27. Yeah. There is a breeze here, but it's not ideal, as Ed said. Yeah. So, so, yeah, MSV naughty <laughs> but i'll send you we'll send you the invoice for our brakes uh, but other than that perfect how's your car been yeah 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 it's been pretty good to be fair um the ao1s were a decent step up from the, the good years which is to be expected but yeah. um you needed the best tire on this kind of temperature day don't you yeah uh, yeah absolutely i mean a day like today is really hard on any tire so it'd be ideal having the best tire that you can um there's some geometry things that can be a little bit improved just to get the car to pivot a little bit more but mm. overall yeah brilliant very very easy laps in this thing very easy laps and you haven't done many no this is second that... track outing in this yeah first one with donington right yes yeah, that's yeah. Correct. yeah. okay but you're quite local here aren't you so that's... yeah yeah sandy bedfordshire so you're what about half an hour if yeah. that yeah, yeah so they're, nice and local they're yeah. about... i've never been able to do many track days here because the other car's too loud Ah. So it's quite strict here. Okay, yeah. yeah. It's a good place to develop stuff. Racing I use it as well because it's yeah. it's got so much runoff as you can see. Um, yeah. unless you come around this corner sideways in the BMW M3, but that's another story. It's, yeah, there's not too much. No, don't don't okay. park too close to the pit wall is my <laughs> suggestion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, absolutely, yeah. So big thanks to Ed from no Sprogly Motorsport. Yeah, there we go. And um, <laughs> yeah, thanks for watching guys and subscribe if you haven't already and see you for the next one very soon.